Meet Billy, an amateur scientist who needs to heat a sample of hydrate copper sulfur for his chemistry experiment. Confident and enthusiastic, Billy thinks he has the right way of doing it. He gets a test tube and uses it to heat the sample. High temperatures. Uh -huh. Then here is something you need the crucible and lid. The crucible and the lid? That's right, the crucible and the lid. Finding a clean crucible. Even just finding the crucible is no easy task. Before heating, Check that the crucible is as clean and dry as possible, with no contamination. Also check for stress fractures or fissures, which can affect your data. And if your crucible has too many dents, replace it with a new one. With the clean crucible, now you're ready to get going. Porcelain crucibles naturally absorb some wavable moisture from the air. So if you're planning to make measurements of mass, you need to dry the crucible so that there's only porcelain, no water. And to dry, we need to heat. So first, place the crucible and lid on a clay triangle and heat until red hot for about 5 minutes. Once the heating is complete, place the crucible on a clean wire gauze and let it cool to room temperature. So Billy, try to put the crucible on the wire gauze. No Billy, you can't grab hot crucibles with your bare hands. You need to use crucible tongs so that you don't get nasty burns on your fingers. When the crucible is cooled enough to room temperature, weigh the crucible and lid together for their constant mass. No Billy, you can't weigh the crucible while it's hot. Not only can it damage the scale, but it can also create convection currents that may make the crucible seem lighter than it really is. You must cool it to room temperature before you weigh it. Now, perform the heating, cooling, and weighing cycle once more, and compare the two weight measurements. If the two weight measurements are equal, you are good to go. Place the sample you want to heat inside the crucible, and weigh the crucible, lid, and the sample together to get the total weight. Now it's time to do the actual experiment. Let's heat the crucible. Heat the crucible on a pipe clay triangle. Remember the wire gauze is where you put the crucible to cool. Now you'll need a Bunsen burner. Start with the small gentle flame. Control the flame of the Bunsen burner using the knob on the Bunsen burner and start low and eventually increase it to a strong flame. While heating, don't forget to keep the lid slightly ajar so that any gas made from the reaction can escape while splattering from the crucible is blocked. As for the time of the heating, some reactions require more heat than others and so needs more heating time. Still, try about 10 minutes or so, or more if your reaction needs a lot of heat. When you're done heating, comes the cooling process. Just gonna cool it quickly with cold water then. Remove the flame and use the crucible tongs to place the crucible on the wire gauze, just like in the previous step. Never, never cool the hot crucible too quickly with water. It might crack. You may have to do your experiment all over again. Also, don't forget to close the lid during the cooling to prevent outside contaminants from entering. Allow both the crucible and lid to cool to room temperature on the wire gauze. Okay, once the crucible is cooled, you have to weigh it, right? Now, to calculate the mass of the content of the crucible, measure the combined mass of the crucible, lid, and contents at room temperature don't forget to clean up after your experiment. To clean the crucible, first use a spatula to dispose of all the solid waste in your crucible into the cru solid waste container. Then rinse the crucible with distilled water. 